I'm gonna try not to give spoilers, but I'll just tell you right now that everyone dies. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to Mama Loves Manga. Today I'm going to try to talk about Rig Veda by Clamp. Oh. <laughs> Rig Veda by Clamp, the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like about it. By now, y'all know that I am a stan for Clamp because of their artwork. And Rig Veda is no exception. Just absolutely stunning. Their backgrounds, their characters, just the, the amount of detail that goes into their work. I, I just, look at that. Every single character is beautiful, even the completely horrible ones that do terrible things. I could gush about the art style all day, but let's talk about the story. It's so confusing. This manga, Rig Veda, stylized as RG Veda, is loosely based on the ancient Indian text, the Rig Veda, but I would say don't read this if you want to actually learn about the Rig Veda. <laughs> Please don't. Oh my goodness. How, this is so difficult. Let me just read the back of the first book. Lord Yasha travels the land as the protector of the mysterious child Ashura, even knowing Ashura's fate is wound with doom for many. Together the pair seek the other four of the six stars whose prophesied gathering will at last defeat Taisha Kutin, the evil usurper of heaven's throne. But all prophecies are open to interpretation. So, that gives the basic gist of this story, but there is so much that goes on. I enjoyed it. Is it my favorite clamp title? No. I did not like how confusing and convoluted the story was. There are a lot of things that when you get to the final book, it's, how do I say this without giving spoilers? You know how sometimes you have a villain who is just seemingly bad for no reason and you're reading the story and you're like, but why are you doing this? Why are you like this? And you don't really get any answers, but then all of a sudden toward the end, you get an answer and it's like this tragic lust story. This like, you find out that they are, um, that everything they did was for the person that they loved and wanted to protect and they're actually not bad at all they just were trying to do this thing and keep this promise that's what this that's what this is I was so frustrated <laughs> because literally for the first two books I'm just like I don't know why this dude is so evil I do not understand it does not make any sense like I am a fan of villains but I need my villains to have a genuine, like, a purpose that makes sense. And not, don't give me the purpose at the end of the series. I need to know from the beginning, oh, this is why he's doing it. Like, you could have given us, like, ooh, I'm out of focus. I'm so mad I'm out of focus. <laughs> I really wish that we had known this particular villain's motives beforehand. Like, maybe have given us some backstory in the beginning. Another character, the previous ruler that Taisha Kooten killed, and everyone is like, oh yeah, he's such, a, he's such a great man, we miss him, we miss him. You find out later that, like also in book three, when we're finding out Taisha Kooten's motives for all of this, stupid motives, um, you find out that, oh, the god, the original god king wasn't actually a good person. Like. <laughs> The storytelling is just not that great. It's good enough that it kept me reading. Like I read all three, all three of these chunkers and I did not hate it while I was reading it. Like I definitely grew an attachment to some of the characters. I grew to hate others. It was emotional. I might have cried once or twice for some characters because they really didn't deserve what happened to, they did not deserve it at all. They were just good people and they did not deserve what happened to them. The story itself is just not super easy to follow. And like I said, you have this villain who seems like he's just 
bad for no reason. There's no motivation. And then you find out his motivation toward the end when at this point it, it feels like a cop out. It just feels like, oh, we want to make sure that people know that this guy actually wasn't that bad. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a spoiler. It probably was, I apologize. For me, what saved this story is the characters themselves. All of the characters are very, very interesting. Even the evil ones that you find out their backstory way later when it's convenient. I've said this so many times before, I'm a very curious person, I'm nosy, I like to know what people are doing. And this gave me that sense of, ooh, I'm watching these people go on this adventure and I'm getting to see their thoughts and see their actions and understand why they're doing things that they're doing. And I, I honestly, have some sort of love and attachment to most of the characters. But the character who was mentioned on the first um, cover, Ashura, I don't like. I do not like Ashura at all. Um, overall, the art is just outstanding. The story is so-so, but the characters are great. Unfortunately, the storytelling does not quite reach the level of the art and the characterization, so it does make it a little bit more difficult for me to recommend just to anyone. If you're going to pick this up, definitely pick it up knowing that the storytelling is not that great, but the art is wonderful and the characters are super cool and interesting to read about. Overall, I do like this series. I'm definitely keeping it because it's Clamp and that's one of my biggest goals is to collect all the Clamp titles that I can. So whether I liked this or not, I'm still keeping it, but I did enjoy it. I did not feel like it was a waste of time for me to read. And honestly, I could see myself rereading it in the future. Hopefully I'll forget that I hate Ashura. Or maybe on the second read, I might kind of see where Ashura is coming from in the end, but probably not. I still hate you, Ashura. These are so heavy, let me put these back. Let me know in the comment section if you have read Rig Veda by Clamp or if you're planning on reading it. And yeah, I think that's all I have. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> hey, I'm back really quick. Cause there are some things that I thought of after I had already turned off the camera and also put away my tripod. So I am currently, I'm holding it in my hand. So I was thinking about themes, the themes and Rig Veda. One theme I think that comes up a lot in this story is the links that we will go to to protect the people we love or to keep a promise we made to someone we love. You, you just see it with a lot of the characters, even with Lord Yasha and um, little Ashra, they've promised to always stay together essentially and Lord Yasha has decided that he's going to keep that promise and protect Ashura with his people's lives, his own life, anyone else's life. <laughs> also Taisha Kooten, the main bad guy, um, he apparently has someone that he wants to protect and um, keep a promise to. Just all of the characters have someone that they love and either want to protect um, whether it's another person or in some cases themselves. There is also a theme of sibling love. We have um, one character who loves her sister so much that her poor sister ends up dying. And we have another character, actually Lord Yasha, who you find out has a brother and there's love there. there it's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of themes. And um, I think they were well done considering the story itself was just a little bit um, I will give them a little bit of a pass because this was their debut manga, like their debut professional series, and they've definitely grown in their storytelling abilities since then. So I'm, you know, I'm not gonna fault them too much for that. But yeah, um, I think that's it. So bye. <laughs>